I've noticed a growing trend amongst neurologists treating multiple sclerosis here in the United States. Apparently, some of them have it in their head that it's okay to stop a person with MS medication when they're middle-aged, and that's bullshit. My name is Aaron Boster. I'm an MS neurologist in Columbus, Ohio. And in this video, I'm gonna share with you some compelling clinical data, which proves my point. Now don't turn away because all of that starts right now. The article I'll be discussing today was recently published in November of 2024 in a journal called the Journal of Managed Care and Specialty Pharmacy. It's entitled Impact and Discontinuing Disease-Modifying Therapies on Healthcare Utilization Amongst Midlife Patients with Multiple Sclerosis in the United States. I'll include a link in case you'd like to read the full article in the description down below. So I've mentioned the term midlife a couple times already in this video, so we should define it. The authors of the paper defined a midlife patient as someone with MS between the ages of 45 and 64. So that was their definition for midlife, which as I reflect on it, makes me midlife. So the objective of the paper was to analyze the association between stopping disease modifying therapy and subsequent healthcare utilization. So let's unpack that a little bit. For starters, as mentioned, they're only looking at patients between the ages of 45 and 64. Second, they didn't look at every disease-modifying therapy. They looked at using uh, interferon products and copaxone products, so those are the so-called injectables. And they looked at some, but not all, of the oral agents, so Tecfidera, Abagio, and Gelinia. Also, they define healthcare utilization as being admitted in the hospital, whether that's for MS or something else, going to an emergency department, again, for MS or something else, and outpatient clinic visits. So where did the patients come from? Now, this is actually really cool. This was not a clinical trial where you enroll patients and then follow them forward. What the authors did was really clever. They turned to this gigantic, enormous American database something called the Marketplace Database, which actually houses over 60 million Americans. This is claims data from insurance companies. It's all de-identified, so you didn't know who the individuals were, but they were able to look at this giant database and they could pull out people with MS between the ages of 45 and 64 from the years of 2001 to 2018. And they could look at whether they were taking their disease-modifying therapy or not, and they could look at whether or not they went to the hospital, why they went to the hospital, whether they went to the emergency department, why they went to the emergency department, and if they saw outpatient providers. It's a pretty clever way of uh, looking at this kind of information. Now, the statistics for this analysis were actually a little bit complex, and I'm gonna simplify it significantly for the sake of our conversation. If you would like to understand the details, they're available in the link down below. You can click that link and there's a free copy of the paper so you can read it yourself. In a somewhat simplified summary, they looked at patients with MS in that age group during that time period, and if they were filling their medicine the whole time they were being evaluated, they were considered to be on therapy. If they stopped the medicine, i.e. they didn't fill the prescription for 90 days, they were considered a discontinuation. And then they looked for the year after discontinuation, or if you were staying on drug, the year that you were on drug, about how often you tapped healthcare. If someone would stop their medicine for 90 days, and then in that year restarted it, they stopped the data, so they didn't get it all muddled. Similarly, someone who they thought were staying on drug, if they stopped for 90 days, they stopped that also. There's a bunch of other statistics to make everything balanced, uh, and it was done properly, as best I can tell. So what were the results? Well, first off, they captured a bunch of people with MS. Just under 150,000 midlife patients with MS were analyzed. So that's a really, really large number. Of those 150,000 midlife MS patients, during the time they were looking, 22.8% stopped their disease-modifying therapy, whereas 772 continued their disease-modifying therapy. And then they looked at their healthcare utilization for 365 days after that happened. And guess what? The midlife MS patients who discontinued their medicine used healthcare a lot more than those that continued. Looking at hospitalizations, 
the people that discontinued their disease-modifying therapy were admitted into the hospital over 10% more often than those that stayed on. When considering emergency department visits, the discontinued patients went to the emergency department about 22% more often than those that stayed on drug. And that held true if you looked at MS-related or non-MS-related ER visits. The authors could also specifically look at MS relapses. So they could look at why someone was admitted in the hospital and they can tell if it was because of an MS relapse. And they could look at whether someone saw an outpatient clinic because of an MS relapse based on whether they then used high dose steroids. And what they found was really, really striking. The midlife MS patients who discontinued their therapy went to the hospital for MS relapses 16% more often than those that stayed on therapy. When you look at outpatient relapse management, so going to your outpatient neurologist and then receiving steroids, the patients that discontinued therapy had 52% higher outpatient relapse treated compared to those that stayed on drug. Wow. The authors concluded that stopping DMT in midlife is probably premature, which is a very polite way of saying, oh my God, I think that's a really bad idea. Now, this is not a perfect paper. There is no perfect investigation, but I actually really like what they did because this is not a clinical trial. This is looking at real live Americans being treated for MS. And it's looking at whether or not they filled drugs and how often they had to go to the hospital or the ER or see their neurologist. And so that really is compelling to an MS neurologist that treats real patients in a real clinic, me. So this helps explain why when someone says, ah, oh, if you reached 55, you can stop your medicine, that's hogwash. This is real world data that helps you better understand that stopping your disease modifying therapy in midlife is a really bad idea. If you'd like to better understand my philosophy of why we should keep treating, I'll throw a link to a video I made on the topic right there. And until my next Monday morning video or my next live stream, this is Aaron Boster saying thanks for learning about MS with me. Be safe and take care.